Hey everyone, in this video we're gonna learn how to use styles in your lit web component. If you don't know about lit or web components, make sure to check the video in the corner above. Let's get started. I now have this simple lit element called simple greeting that returns an h1 hello world. We define it as simple greeting custom element and we use it in the HTML here. How do we use styles in lit? Well, we have to start by defining a static styles property and we can assign it to, just like we've used the HTML function to return a template result, we will use the CSS function to return some CSS code. And this CSS will only be scoped to this shadow DOM returned by this web component. So if I write over here h1 and I do color red, you will see, yeah, the h1 is now in red. However, the most important thing is that if I go all the way back to the main page and I define a new h1, this is outside of the web component, you will see that this h1 is not targeted by this h1 selector. That's because the styles inside the shadow DOM are contained within that shadow DOM. We can see that in DevTools. If I right click inspect, this is the shadow root. This is simple greeting. This is the h1. There are no h1 styles except for the user agent one. And if I go to the h1 inside of the shadow root, we have this h1 over here. Now this is great because it makes your CSS much easier. Here I just have to say h1. I don't have to even give it an ID. I don't have to give it a class. I don't have to use BEM or other CSS conventions because the CSS is only targeting the shadow DOM. While selectors only work in the shadow DOM, some CSS properties defined on your main page can actually pierce the shadow boundaries. So the selectors don't really pierce that, but the properties that are inherited, they will actually pierce the shadow boundaries. So let's take a look at an example. Now I'm gonna remove these styles over here. And so we have empty styles. That's why these two H1s are now with the default color. Now, if I go back to the HTML and I define an H1 selector and I set the color to green, this will only match the H1 outside of the H1 that is not in a shadow DOM. So it doesn't match the simple greeting. It will only match this one. Now there's difference though, if I define the body to have a color green, you will see now all the H1s on the page inherit the color property. And this is key here because the color property is inherited, then it will actually pass through the shadow boundary. It will pierce the shadow boundary. So how do you know which properties will pierce the shadow boundaries? Well, you just have to look if they are inherited. You can see that on MDN. Inherited, yes. When it's inherited, then it will actually be able to pierce the shadow boundaries. Let's inspect, take a look here. See the H1, these are the user agent styles and it inherited from simple greeting, the color green. That's because simple greeting also inherited from the body color green. But the key here is that this color green should be defined on a parent. If you define it on the H1, then it only matches this H1 over here. So, and this is not a parent of simple greeting and this is why it's not inherited. So that's key here, that's important. Now, what are the properties that pierce the shadow DOM? Most importantly, custom properties. This is one of the most important ones because it allows you to customize the styles so if you define on the root element a couple of custom properties, they will be inherited by your web component. And this is great. Some other things are mostly font related. So all the font properties, letter spacing, word spacing, line height, and similar ones. And also the color. As a note, the visibility property is also inherited, whereas the display property is not inherited. That's because if you set an element to visibility invisible, this will actually be inherited by all the children because the browser needs to calculate the space for them, but it will just not show them. On the other hand, if you specify display none, then the element will be completely removed from the CSS OM, from the CSS object model. And this is why it's not inherited. Now you might be wondering whether this is efficient or not because we're defining some CSS over here. And if I use simple greeting, let's go ahead and remove this. Use simple greeting twice and then have some styles here, color red. Is this efficient? Is it efficient that for every web component we have H1 color red? On most browsers, yes, at least at the time of recording, because this is using the constructable, uh, constructable style sheets. And this is supported on all browsers except Safari at the moment, but I can see it, it's in technology preview. So maybe by the time you're watching this video, it is supported. So how does this work? The browser does not actually 
recreate the style sheet for every web component. So if you have like a thousand of these, it's not re gonna recreate it a thousand times. Instead, it creates one style sheet that has these styles and then it only reuses it. And you can see that by inspecting the H1 comes from constructed style sheets. So even though this is not supported on Safari at the moment, Lit has a fallback so it doesn't break on Safari. Now, maybe this is the reason why you're watching this video. What if you want to use Bootstrap? What if you want to use Tailwind or some other library? This is usually a challenge and there's a lack of resources on the internet about this. Because by default, every, shadow compo every web component has no styles from outside other than some properties that it inherits. But if you have Bootstrap that's adding a .text center class, you really won't get it in that component. There are two ways to solve this. I'm gonna start by the one I think is usually suboptimal, but it depends on the use case. The styles property can actually accept an array of styles. So here we have CSS, H1, color, red. But I can define another one. I can say CSS and then dot text center, text align center. Now, you do not wanna recreate this every time, but you can create a new file and call it global.css, for example and this will export this. So export, export default CSS. Then we need to import CSS from lit. And now we can, oh, this should have not been CSS, global styles.js. We can now import uh, global styles from global styles.js. And now over here we can do global styles and now if i use class text center you will see it is aligned in the center so in practice i've never had experience where my global styles is a massive library like bootstrap or tailwind and this is why i think when you want to use a library this is not really the ideal choice instead it would be best to use ui components that wrap the library for example let's see if there's one for bootstrap lit so yeah looking a bit i can find this one where let's say you want to use the nav bar you have a scope package i don't really know if this package is maintained yeah this is uh, not maintained now the thing is that if you're using lit you're probably recently starting a website from scratch and bootstrap is not so common nowadays the second approach would be to create components for every ui element so you create app dash button app dash dialog app dash nav bar and then you either pull out the styles from Bootstrap or you, it, it's, it's not gonna be very easy though. Or you just create your own styles um, or use a library that supports it. When I was recording this, I thought MWC supports it, so the Material Web Components. But uh, since Google launched Material U, so that's V3, I think, then the components are lagging behind and I think they're not really production ready. But if we go back to the uh, version two, these are the Material Web Components and there's a button and these are all web components. So you can see here, this is a MWC button. If I go back, this is an MWC dialog probably over here. So you already have a web component for every UI element and you can just use them and not having to worry about the styles. And I think this is really the best way to tackle this. This is how I approach this myself in my courses, learn javascript.online reactutorial.app, learnprogramming.online, and the new one, learnhmlcss.online. They're all linked in the description below. I have the UI kit, app button, app modal, app menu, app menu item, and these wrap the material web components. And whenever I wanna use a UI element, like a button and dialog, I just use these components without having to worry about their styles anymore. I think this is the best approach. It's worked really well for me because you separate the styles that you need for your UI kit versus the styles that you need in the current component. So if I create a dialog, it will be using app dialog and I will need to write some styles, but these styles will only be the customizations for this current dialog. Maybe some text centering, some extra paddings and margins, but I don't have to worry about repeating all the styles for the dialog every time. So in conclusion, it's probably gonna be tricky if it's just the first time you're using styles in a web component in a large project. If you lean in on it, however, you will see the long-term benefit. If I look at my project, all the selectors are so simple. So if you open a web component, it's like an H1 and then a certain color, an H2 and a certain margin. And you target other web components like the app dash button, and then you do some kind of text align center or you change a property 
a custom property because the out button is customizable. If you really lean in on this, it's gonna be very nice on the, in the long run. It may be a little bit challenging. It also depends on what you wanna use. For example, I've, I haven't used Tailwind, but if you wanna use Tailwind, you probably wanna have some kind of processor that checks which classes you're using and what not to remove them from the global bundle you will need to use a certain library and a processor for that. You, you cannot just import the entire Tailwind library and put it in every component because then it's gonna be, I think, a megabyte of CSS and that's not the main intent of Tailwind. But it's not just about Tailwind, you will probably have similar issues with Bootstrap. So ideally you would wanna go with a UI library that supports web components or works well with it. Or if you're creating your own, then I would recommend using the ING line one. This is meant as a white label. You will be able to customize them easily. So you don't have to worry about the accessibility and uh, you just provide custom variables and some styles to be able to customize them. And this makes your life a little bit easier. I haven't used it myself, but I've heard good things about it. So let me know what are your challenges with web components and I'll see you in the next one. Make sure to check out the courses below and see you next time.